feels like just yesterday I came your way excitedly announcing the arrival of our AI goods. Here at the farm, we call her Eve. And today, barely five months old. See, from that baby who weighed what, almost two kg, as a product of an artificial insemination cross between a West African dwarf mother and a boar father, yes. <laughs> Come, I have to do yes. this video with okay. you. Should How I much help you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How much does she weigh today? <laughs> so it's about 13 kg, 13.5. 13.5? Yes. That's a five months old today. Yeah. Wow. Do you guys, I no, I hope you remember, but if you're a new follower here, welcome. This is Farming in Africa. YouTube channel, we are also on Facebook, on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, across all the social media platforms. And we are standing right here at our farm. That is the beauty of what we do. We don't just talk about farming, we live it, okay? So Godfrey and I are standing right here at the Sementia Learning and Development Farm. And in Godfrey's hand is this baby called Eve. Is it still called Eve? Yes. <laughs> the mother is a West African dwarf goat and the father is a boa goat. Because of the weight disparities, there wasn't a natural crossing or mating. We inseminated the semen from the boa father into the West African mother, and she gave us this. I think you can let her go mm, out okay. and discuss the rest further. All right. Woo. Welcome once again. This, <laughs> this is the kid's pen, guys. This is the kid's pen. After three months, she was weaned, right? Yeah. And then she was moved to the kid's pen. How yeah. has that journey been since? Um, it's been good mm -hmm. because it's the life been, of a farmer. <laughs> it's been growing uh -huh. week by week, mm -hmm. um, as you saw in the video. So yeah, yeah it's been very well Whoa. since we wind it. And it's Five been... months at thirteen point five kg. If it were to be a local breed at five months, how much would it be weighing at that same age? Uh, let me see if I can. Oh no, that we have a West African dwarf that's about eight to nine months. Okay. And it's about six to seven kg. Ish. Yeah. So you could see even about wow. eight months. Wow. It's about six kg, and this is just five months. Wow. Or thirteen. Wow. So with that, with the rate at which it grows, it's very fast. The difference is clear. Yes. You know when we first announced um, the success or the result of this project we embarked yeah. on, some people came. Why do you want to? What's, there is a word a particular person is. I'm trying to remember, I forget it. But the person was literally saying, why do you want to mess up with God's breeds? <laughs> and you see, for those of you who still have questions on your mind, it's all about improving the genetics of livestock we have, especially right here in West Africa. What Godfred said just brings to mind how much of a difference there is between our local breeds yeah. and our exotic breeds. And all we are trying to do as part of our efforts to revolutionize the livestock industry is to improve the genetics, number one. Okay, and then we go further to improve the livestock value chain and all of that. But if a local breed weighs around six, seven kg, that's at five months. Yeah, and eight, about eight months. It's even more yeah, it's than even five more months. Than the five about months. eight <laughs> months. And this hybrid, our F1, which you call Eve, weighs 30, almost 14 yes. at five months. Yeah. Judge for yourself, that's all. <laughs> but then again, since uh, you weaned it, how has the feeding been? How would you say it has bonded with the kids? I mean, we are in the kids' pen today. Yeah. Run me through all of that. Yes, yeah. so it was with the mother for about three months. For about we, three months. And then we brought it here to also be with the other kids as well. Um, actually, in terms of feeding, they've been feeding all right. Um, they've been able to be together since, um, after the two months, yeah. so it's been doing very well in terms of feeding. Feeding with the pellets, yeah. the greens, yeah. and then the hay. So it's been doing very well. So as part of the research we did, we knew for a fact that when this baby survives, yeah. and oh, before I go further, the mother actually produced three babies, yeah. right? Yes, true. She conceived three yeah. and uh, gave birth to the three naturally, no assistance. It's one of the things we're really concerned mm -hmm. about because we all expected the baby she was carrying to be huge. And they were, yeah. but like always, we share the lows and the highs with you. 
out of the three babies, only Eve survived. We had two females and one male. Yeah. Yeah. But we lost the other two and only Eve survived. So back to what you were saying. What were you saying? So yes, so I was saying in terms of feeding, it's doing very well. In terms of feeding, it's doing very well. Yeah. My name is Suresh. I am from India. Past three years, I am following Farming in Africa channel. This is a very nice channel for farming and uh, animal rearing. Please share and subscribe and uh, comment. And uh, please follow all social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram and uh, YouTube. Um, in terms of how it relates to the other kids, mm -hmm. I feel like if it were to be humans, how we relate to uh, health care, yeah. if I want these to is different. How yeah. has that been here? Um, I don't think goats know that this is a half cast, <laughs> this is a local, but they all um, do live uh -huh. together in peace, yeah. feed together, they all yeah. move there when it's very hot or when it's raining, yeah. they sleep together and everything. In terms of resistance to diseases, we researched and we knew for a fact that this hybrid we we're going to get would have the resistance and the hardiness of the West African dwarf mother yeah, true. and the fast growth mm -hmm. of the father. Yeah. The fast growth is obvious, Godfrey mentioned the weight, but about the resistance to diseases, the hardiness, adaptation, what have you observed about that? Okay, so is it even true? Are you seeing it? Yeah, we, I'm seeing it because since we weaned it, we dewormed it, we continued with the necessary vaccinations that we have to give it. And since they hasn't been sick, we haven't seen any sickness in it yeah so it's doing very well in terms of health yeah really yeah i know every now and then is a livestock farm diseases happen certain outbreaks happen thankfully we haven't experienced any outbreaks but every now and then diarrhea foot rot yeah. something uh have you witnessed anything like that with this particular baby not yet no no diarrhea no issues. diarrhea issues it's doing very well um wow. because we also regulate their feeding Okay. So okay, okay. we don't overfeed on mm. the supplement feed. We don't, we don't overfeed also on the greens as well. So in terms of diarrhea or something like that, we haven't really observed that yet. You've used an interesting term, overfeed. Because usually in this industry, <laughs> we are rather scared of underfeeding. Because hey, feed is always a challenge. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. What do you mean by overfeed? And what are some of the consequences of overfeeding? Yes. So as you said, you mentioned diarrhea. Diarrhea can be caused by bacteria mm -hmm. or, or the overfeeding of very high moisture feeds. Okay, like the fresh, like the, the fresh, fresh forage. Yes, okay. or the pellet that we give them. Okay. So we ha we, as I said, we weigh it every time. So yeah. we do the calculations to see how many kg or grams of pellet feed we give it. Yeah. How many hours should we even allow it to go outside to graze? Interesting. So if you leave it from morning to afternoon, that's overfeeding on the green. And definitely you have diarrhea because it's taking too much of moisture feed. Hey. Yeah. Alfred, <laughs> then what happens to our farmers in the local communities who allow their animals to go out and graze the whole day? Yeah. Especially those who are also crop farmers because mm -hmm. they leave the animals. Yes. And then that's it. And then it. they leave, yeah. So if you study around, you see yeah. that they go to that room. Mm -hmm. They don't really, you don't really see them feeding all the time. Mostly you see them li lying down. Okay. So when they feed and they get satisfied, okay. you see they will stop. And then okay. they start finding maize, those dry, dried feet to also feed on. Interesting. Yes. They know to find dry feet. Yes. So even if you have a maize farm, you see that they will come to the maize farm yes. and start feeding from that. So they don't really feed much on the green. Yeah. They don't feed on it too much. But yeah. if, you, if you have a paddock mm -hmm. and you leave it to go there, mm -hmm. it only has the green to feed on. It doesn't have any yeah. other option. Yeah, that's if so you it, have only a paddock. Yes, it will go in to feed. So you need to also see how many hours you allow it wow. to, to spend there. So in effect, if you are letting your animal live in a restricted environment, then you should be intentional about the kinds and types of feeding. Yes, you give it, them. You give them. Yeah, yeah. And if you overfeed too much also on the supplements, yeah. it's to start having diarrhea as well. Interesting. Yeah, so with that one too, you need to regulate it. Wow, this reminds me of those of you who come to purchase sacks of the supplements. You know, some people actually think it's not economical because in their <laughs> heads, that's all they are going to feed their uh, animals. No. Please tell them that's not how we do it. Yeah, for me. so that is a supplement. <laughs> so you just give it a little yeah. to supplement um, and then get the minerals and vitamins that they don't get when they go outside yeah. to graze. So it's just a supplement that you give it very it's little. It's just a supplement, guys. Yeah. So it's very, very economical, okay? Handful at a time just to provide the deficient nutrients yeah. in the animal's body. Now, I'm talking about this same project of artificial insemination. As part of the questions and inquiries that poured in, yeah. people were now asking, when will you guys commercialize this AI? 
because hey i have only west african dwarf at my farm but yeah. i really need a mix of the exotic blood okay can you people come and help me have we commercialized it yet what would you say about that please? um so with that mm -hmm. you can contact the number below okay. and then they will arrange depending on where you are and okay. then they can arrange talk to you and then we can come over to the farm. Hey, go for are you saying system. we have commercialized it? Um, yes, with some farmers. With some farmers. Yes. So if you talk to the the, the yeah the team, we will assist you. Okay. <laughs> this guy is very very political, though. You see the answer he gave. All he's saying is just reach out. Okay, reach out because there are a lot of factors that go into this particular project. Yes. And I must also say that we haven't gone all out on that because just like our boss would always say, we need to get a lot of successes okay True. a lot of successes so we are hoping that in the next how many months because we have inseminated some right yes so at the moment how, roughly how many have we inseminated here um about 15 west african dwarfs wow yes and then i think four sahelians wow yeah so you're roughly 20. yeah roughly 20. interesting talking about successes if all of these 20 actually give us successful results mm -hmm. then you, you will hear the end of us you <laughs> already are not hearing the end but that's great news so yes. the whole point is we are not stopping at eve no we, we are, are going to stopping. be getting more eves yes very siblings from eve so siblings yeah siblings for eve <laughs> yeah so we will continue doing it yeah. and then we get more we become more perfect at it yes. and then we can actually beautiful go out. Yeah. would you say this is the future yes this is the future because it's improving the genetics that we also have here mm -hmm. and west africa so yeah that's this is the future mm, yeah. this is the future i have no words at this point for you i promised you this is going to be a short video and yes if you are interested in the artificial insemination we've shown you practically the results of it do reach out to godfred the team and all things being equal godfrey should be able to visit your farm with his expertise and do some magic for you okay but hey as always do let us engage in the comment section and thank you so much for watching this far thank you we really appreciate that i believe by now you have subscribed to farming in africa youtube channel also following us on facebook instagram tiktok linkedin hey you name it let's do this together till i come your way hopefully again with some more knowledgeable education from Godfred. It is bye-bye for now. We love you so much. <laughs>